Feast of St. James the Apostle, 25th of July, Reflection. My dear friends, so in, in the Bible there are four James, where the one who wrote the James letter and leader of Jerusalem community and there's another James. So this particular James belongs to the inner circle of the Lord. In Luke chapter 8 verse 15, in Jairus' place, this James was there. And Mark chapter 19, 24, in Transfiguration, this James was there. And then Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to 34, again in Gethsemane, this particular James was there. And he's the apostle, and also uh, he's the son of Zebedee and Shalomi, and elder brother of John. My dear friends, so in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22, we find when Peter and Andrew was called, then Jesus called James and John. So they are the first four disciples who are called by the Lord. And he also came elder and he's also named the greater. Of course, greater because there's another James there. He's a little taller and older. And there's another James in the Bible. So when it comes to when it comes to his life, my dear friends. So he was he's the first to die, so to be persecuted among the disciples. In, in Acts chapter 12, we find he was beheaded by Herod the Agrippa. And so his life, his life of great worth to our church. So we find in the first reading, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So we all are jars of clay, my dear friends. So we, we, we have a value because, because of our calling. We are the jars and we contain God's grace. So it's important, it's important that you, that you, that you are connected to the Lord strongly. So in the first, in the gospel we find the mother of sons of Zebedee came up to Jesus with her sons and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, what do you want? My dear friends, most of the time, like Shalomi, mother of James and John, of course she is a devout lady who sacrificed all her wealth for the mission of the Lord. And, uh, and uh, so she kind of thought that she's favored by God, maybe. And uh, she kind of wanted her sons to be either in the either side of the Lord. So that's why she's asking this. And the Lord is saying, even you don't know what you're asking. Say those two sons of mine are to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the chalice that I am drink? I am to drink. My dear friends, so chalice of the Lord, chalice which means the suffering. Those days, they used chalice to drink wine. Wine are made when the grapes are crushed. And that's how we are called to go through the suffering. So, they said to him, we are able, without knowing exactly what they have to go through. And he said, you will drink my chalice, definitely. That's how James was beheaded in, in according to chapter, uh, John 8 to 12 chapter of Acts of the Apostles. So we, do, so the, when they wanted a position, Jesus said, position does not belong to us, but you have to drink from my chalice. You have to, you have to take part in, in my pain, suffering. 
My dear friends, all the disciples were beheaded or were persecuted except John. He died in his old age. All the disciples, everyone for that matter, different ways they were persecuted. He said to them, you will drink my chalice, but to sit at my right hand and my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been prepared by my father. Positions belong. That's exactly why you should not follow the Lord because of a position. Foxes have dens, birds have nests. Son of man does not have a place to lay his head. So you cannot follow looking up by expecting positions. That's exactly what the Lord is breaking in their lives. When the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. And Jesus called them to himself, him and said, My dear friends, for that matter, they, all the others were jealous, isn't it? They were angry. So they all were in the same boat, looking for positions. The answer, when they were taken closer to the Lord, in his warmth, he teaches them what to do. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. I shall not be, it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So it's a calling, calling to suffer. There's no other way. That's the meaning of his chalice. That's the meaning of, real meaning of the chalice. He, has, he had to die for us and give his blood as a ransom. And we are to take part in his suffering. Those who want to follow him, take up the cross and follow me. My dear friends, so that's exactly why. But then it's his cup, isn't it? Are you ready to drink from my cup? You take part. You're connected to him through your suffering. It's beautiful. So of course it's painful. But then in the, that pain is intermingled with the connection. You feel him in that pain. So the, the, the areas where your pain, where it is painful, trauma, agony. You will feel him. That's the very place you are being connected, my dear friends. So that's why we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. So this world pain, pain in the worldly point of view, of course, it is a curse. Seemingly everything is over. But in the, in the eyes of God, no, it's never, it's not the end. It's another journey. Perplexed by but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus. So we, we take part in that pain, struggle, but then we are not that destroyed. So that pain is different. Seemingly everything is over, but not. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So when we suffer, that is the best way of witnessing, my dear friends. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for our sake, for, for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and to more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. My dear friends, so that's exactly happened in the life of James. He gave his life, first to give his life among the disciples. Today, that blood, shedded blood, connected to Jesus' blood, has power in the church. 
It became, became a seed, a powerful seed in the life of the church. Amen. May God bless you.